director with the Environmental Law Department here at the Faculty of Law UVic. And we've just got a major report that's just been published yesterday called Reinventing Rainwater Management, a strategy to protect health and restore nature in the capital region. And a week from Thursday on March 4th, we're going to have a major public meeting at the law school with all municipal counselors, planners, engineers, developers, members of the public invited. Uh, the Times columnist is going to be doing some special stories on this in the next few days. Uh, and I think that this is an opportunity to raise consciousness about problems like the ones that you face in Mount Creek. And in our report, we actually talk about the Mount Creek Initiative as being an ideal way of approaching this. But we need to extend it beyond Mount Creek to Douglas Creek. We have the uh, descriptions in here about the, the salmon being washed out of Douglas Creek. Great Creek on the peninsula. We have descriptions about the stormwater cabinet and the stormwater in Ray Creek. We have uh, actually photographs of the stormwater pipes of Victoria that very few people have actually seen. A great photograph of the big tunnel with the little pony wall in between the sanitary sewage and the stormwater. You can see exactly what, how stormwater, the way we deal with stormwater, is putting excrement onto the beaches, which is the public health the sewage is the stormwater. Um, and we also talk about shellfish closure and, and talk about the orca, the most majestic mammal in, uh, in British Columbia, that actually stormwater is perhaps the biggest threat because now uh, recent science has shown that uh, stormwater is delivering PCBs into the, the ecosystem. And PCBs is, of course, one of the big threats to orca because it, uh, it uh, damages the reproductive system. And, and so in, in this, we talked about uh, the solutions, which you all know probably better than I do, and, uh, and about the Creek Initiative being an important one. We talked about the fact that the city of Philadelphia, that was mentioned earlier on, uh, has gone to this major kind of policy of peeling back the pavement across the, the city. Now, I don't know if it was mentioned here, but part of the reason for that was that they did a, a triple bottom line analysis of, of economic monetized benefits of LID compared to putting in pipes, and they found that LID produced 23 times the benefit of doing pipes. And we have a, a, a lot of the data in here on the economic uh, advantages, other economic advantages for developing and so forth of LID. And then we, we have a specific strategy that we're putting forward to the public a week from Thursday at the law school, uh, which is to, to legislate LID in new development. Uh, as the law in the western side of Washington State requires LID now, uh, and a number of other jurisdictions are moving in that way. And, and certainly that could uh, strengthen the kind of partnership approach, which is so essential. We also talk about the need to actually establish a utility charge for stormwater, a user pay system, so that we have money to do LID. Um, we talk about watershed governance and the fact that uh, we've got 13 municipalities here. It's fragmented jurisdiction. Very difficult to do watershed planning if you've got that fragmented uh, jurisdiction. We make an argument for a, a regional rainwater commission and with targets, specific targets, like let us let's reduce all the public health warnings that are happening because of sewage and stormwater. By 2015, we should have zero public health warnings, zero public uh, or environmental health uh, warnings. Uh, we should be able to eat the shellfish in the CRD for the next 20 years, and in 25 years, fix that ancient infrastructure of stormwater. Uh, we talk about how economic incentives can be structured to, uh, to motivate local homeowners to install rain gardens in their properties, give them a, an economic incentive as well as an environmental and social incentive that they'll do it, uh, and the need for demonstration projects. And, and what really one of the highlighted things here is the need for more about the Creek Initiative. So congratulations to all of you. That's March 4th, 7 o'clock at the law school. And the report is on our website, which is uh, www.elc. I've got cards here.